can you imagine pushing a sled as hard as you can? It's a really heavy sled, and then someone also takes the weight out of the sled. You just fall on your face. face. Yeah. And then generator would do the same thing. Yeah. So I guess, what are we working on specifically here? So the ballast is basically, you have a false load on your plant that you can turn on and off. You have that because if you turn on a load, you need to have that power there instantly. Like if you turn on an oven, you expect that power to just be there. And when you turn off the oven, suddenly that load comes off. You don't want to have your generator spin up now that it's suddenly freed of this huge load. You don't want to go up from, say, if we're running at 110 volts, you want yeah. to go up to 130 because you've turned off the oven. This is our load that switches on and off as a result of things that you do. You can imagine this being like the world's smallest hot water tank with the most elements in it. Five elements in what looks like probably three liters of water, four liters of water maybe in there. Yeah. It runs continuously through here. The reason that we're deep in here is because we actually forgot to supply it with water and uh, that uh, that caused some issues. It's a bad thing to do. It's hard on electronics to say the least. With our controller here, when I wired this back together, I assumed that our safety switch is on either end. The arm will come over and hit that safety switch and stop. I assume that they're just a switch. They turn on and they turn off. But apparently they've got diodes in them. So when they activate, it'll, it won't let the electricity go through one way, but it'll let it go through the other way. So it stops it, but you can still back it off. So what happened was because I put them in reverse, it would hit it and it would not only not stop, but just keep on going and you couldn't stop it from keeping on going. So it tried to smash itself yeah. apart. Yeah, that happened about eight o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and so anyway, the interesting thing, the thing that blew was not the fuse that's in here somewhere, but actually inside this panel, one of the wires, the red wire that for the uh, reduced power, no, I think it was the increased power, uh, just it unsoldered itself. It got hot enough that it just melted the solder and just came apart. So I had to, the little headlamp, go in there and solder it. Yeah. Your solder can be your fuse. Okay, so the reason that we're in here doing this repair job, this is part three of repairing this hydro plant. Part one and two I'll put in the description, you can check those out. We are back in here repairing the power plant because we forgot to run water through our ballast when we started it up for the first time. Now Mike and I will tackle pretty much any project, but we also need to have our electricity running. So for this video only, we brought in a specialist and he is more than qualified to be working on the electronics in this because he put them all together in the first we place. We discovered that uh, two of our heating elements are not working and Art just showed me how to check for that. You basically just take your multimeter and you put it on the end here. You get One almost zero. It's point, probably point. enough to beep the, beep the beeper even being really careful with it because the wires are bigger than the terminals. One of the very early governors I made back in the early 1990s. 90s, yeah. And I don't use that anymore. 1990er. So that's a little switch that turns those elements yeah. on and off. And one of those switches went and two of the elements went. So we were actually only running on, it was basically like one load or something. Yeah, yeah. two, two loads. The way this works, it's called a binary load. That means each heater is twice as big as the one before it. Because when you have that sequence, then you can get absolutely any combination in steps equal to the very smallest one. Okay. Even steps. So if, you're, if your first load is a one, your second load is a two? Yeah. And your third load is like a four? So you, get, you can put on this one, that's a one. Yeah. That one, that's a two. Yeah. These two, that's a three. Next one is a four. Gotcha. That one and that one is a five, and so on. Okay. All the way up to about 15. It's a very high-powered version of a, a digital analog converter. So notice there's an insulating washer here. Yeah. That prevents corrosion of the element. So yeah, it's got a sleeve on there and a gasket, so it's totally separated from yeah. everything. Yeah. The box that I have never looked inside of. Inside These of things are so hard to work on. I've changed it now. So I got so one, mad at the two, one I got four. in my plant that I put all the electronics out in a separate board out here. So you just have elements in one box and you have electronics in a separate box, sort of? So yeah. just have wires running to it for power yeah. supply? Yeah. And the controllers are all in a separate box? No, the controller is still up in here. Oh, okay. The later ones I built, though, this part of the 
lid goes whoosh and hinges Oh on. yeah, so you can access that. Oh, that's yes. nice. There you go, that's fancy. So this is, this is art selling us the latest. The You're latest saying that if we, uh, <laughs> if we buy the latest technology from you, I, there's some improvements. I have to make them up special and you don't want to know what it costs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they work just the same as what is what they do now, but they're just arranged. It's a pain in the butt to work on more wires. And yeah, they're all crossed things. over, kind of like the inside of a uh, Dodge Cummins movie. <laughs> 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 well, Dodge has been doing it for a while. They still haven't figured it out. Okay, this is the reading between ground and frame. Getting 2.38. Yeah, that's, that's actually in, uh, probably just leakage through the element. So right. here's ground to the bolt. That should be nothing. Yeah, there so you go. Should put it on the beep, beep range for that one. There we get the beep. Okay, what are we reading there? I don't 190. Know. So something's happening on that one. Yeah, that's probably inside. A little bit of corrosion inside. Like on the actual element? Yeah. Okay. Okay, water is coming out of there now. <laughs> yeah, it should. Yeah. Just let the air in through this. I think the reason it's not working is it got turned on with no water. Well, it could have been one of the issues for sure. <laughs> you don't last long when you do yeah. that. If this one was 1500, this one. Is that? 3, this one's 6,000. These two think 6,000 making 12,000. That sounds more rational. Okay. Yeah, that would be what we got. So you will need. Because each one of these will run us. Yeah, so we need. 3,000? 3,000. Like this one? And we got it. That one says 3,000. Yes. Just trying to get a flat surface for the gasket to work on. Yeah, I wish I had some brake clean or something. It doesn't look pretty, but it's nice and flat again. Thank you. 